Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Nathan from the ebook reader blog. For this video, I've got the Inkpad Color 2 to review, a uh, follow up to the original Inkpad Color from 2021. It's got a new design, the page buttons all the way at the bottom of the device now. Uh, it's waterproof now as well. They added a warm front light. It's got an upgraded quad core CPU, so the performance is better. It does have an indented screen, which is kind of a little bit unusual for this design. The Inkpad 4 has a flush screen with the same design. Uh, otherwise, it's very similar. It's got this texture on the back. Uh, they added a speaker to this model as well. So you got a speaker here on the side. That's what those two holes are for. USB-C port on the bottom. So they did remove the micro SD card slot. That's not available on this model, but they did double the storage space to 32 gigabytes um, so yeah let's go ahead and boot this up now the power button is now located on the as part of the buttons here instead of along the bottom edge uh, so it boots up relatively quickly let's go ahead and talk about the front light now so the front light has more range of brightness settings than it did on the original model I felt like it was too bright at the lower range before but now has better range and it also has the warm front light the original model did not have the warm front light control uh, it's also got the auto light sensor as well so this is what it looks like when you're reading an ebook with the warm front light going you can also adjust the brightness by swiping up and down the right side of the screen you can adjust the warm color by uh, swiping up and down the left side of the screen so it's pretty easy to adjust that on the fly uh, another new setting they added to the ink pad color too um, is the ability to use dark mode so you come up here to the menu just switch it over to dark mode and you'll get the white text with the black background it will change the front light setting there as well so it'll have a different setting if you whatever you set it it'll remember what it was before so it's not as blinding bright if you're turning it on at night all right so this is a look at the interface this is the home screen it has this like widget layout thing here where you can swipe through the different views to quickly jump to different titles i'll show you like stuff you've recently added um, and then you've also got the library view the main library view uh, there's some different um, ways to view this as well so you can have the sort of book cover and the list option and it does enter the partial refresh mode when scrolling so it's a little bit smoother and then it normally would be and then so you've got the bigger cover view here and you've got the smaller cover view as well so there's some different views that you can choose from the library list you've also got some different sorting options so different um, you know you can sort by date by author and you've got the search bar up there as well so you can find your different types of content another cool thing with the pocket books um, if you didn't want to view it in the book layout like this you could switch over to folder view if you set up folders on the device you can just uh, browse your folders that way instead of having the library view so a little bit more versatile than some other devices all right so let's show off the color screen a little bit here they have this color guide on here and it has some you know good images in here um, that really shows off the screen with the color ink as you can see here the color is uh, definitely improved over the uh, first gen model i have a comparison review if you wanted to check that out and the text is also darker on this newer one as well so the screen's definitely uh, been upgraded uh, one thing that is kind of weird though is if you're using dark mode it will invert the colors now some devices that have dark mode it, it leaves the images alone so it doesn't invert those um, but so far with this pocketbook as you can see here it does invert the colors as well if you're using dark mode uh, one thing that's kind of weird about that though is if you go back to the home screen like the images aren't inverted so it knows not to invert them at times um, and it does it initially and then it'll change back but anyway um, so here's what it looks like under normal view so the colors definitely do pop with the uh, upgraded screen Obviously the color quality is still not anywhere near LCD screens, but for ink, it's surprisingly good. Uh, when it comes to eBooks, it's not gonna be a whole lot of use for you, except you can do uh, highlights that has support for multicolored highlights on the pocketbook app here. And you can also add text notes. Uh, and if you wanted to, you could um, draw with your finger as well. So it has some different note taking uh, features as you can see right here. Um, and then one of them is that you can actually draw on the screen. It doesn't have stylus support. I mean, unless you use like a capacitive stylus, it'll work with anything like this. Um, but it doesn't have like the Wacom stylus like some eNotes have. But you can use your finger to like write on the screen. You've got some different line sizes. You got your eraser up here. You've got the undo, the redo. Um, so yeah, you do have some different options for the notes. And of course, like I said, the multicolored highlights uh, take advantage of the color ink screen when you're reading eBooks. And like I said, the text is darker on this screen than it is on the previous version. So the screen has been upgraded in more ways than one, not just when it comes to color. So when you rescale the font sizes here, so like the drawings will get rescaled with it and it will change. But um, anyway, so we do have the notes. They will, uh, has this note section on the home screen that you can go to as well. And all the highlights, notes, and stuff that you get added, you can see here, will get added to a list on the uh, note app. 
All right, so another thing with the uh, pocketbook interface here is if you hold down on the home button, it will bring up like this task manager. You can quickly jump between recently opened books. You can uh, go back to your library views. You can see here you have some other quick settings like you can lock your device or take screenshots. So that's a quick way to jump around. You just hold down the menu or the home button. Uh, it's the furthest to the left. So when you're in an ebook, you can navigate using the table of contents. You got a window that opens up for this and it'll also have a section for your bookmarks and then your notes. And then you've got the information about your book here as well. Also wanted to talk about a little bit of the customization options for an ebook. If you bring up the menu here, you can tap in the center of the screen or hit the menu button. Um, so in the settings list here, you don't have a whole lot of options. You got three line spacing settings, three margin settings, similar to Kindle's. Uh, and then in the font adjustment window here, you have a whole bunch of fonts here. I don't really like any of these fonts really. They kind of have like a faded look to them. They don't really look like they've been optimized for ink at all, but you can embed fonts in the ebooks. Another thing pocketbooks have is text to speech. Bilbo was very polite to him, calling him Master Hamfast, and consulting him constantly upon the growing of vegetables in the matter of roots, especially potatoes. The gaffer was recognized as the leading authority by all in the neighborhood, including himself. But what about this Frodo that lives with him? Asked Old Nooks of Bywater. Baggins is his name, but he's more than half a brandy buck. They say, it beats me why any Baggins of Hobbiton should go looking for him. The built-in speaker isn't very loud, but it's enough to get the job done if the room is quiet. And it also has an audiobook player. Admirably balanced mind. He was, I take it, the most perfect reasoning and observing machine that the world has seen. But as a lover of his own delicate and finely adjusted temperament, story number two in the adventures of Sherlock Holmes, this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Number two, the red-headed league. I had called upon my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, one day in the autumn of last year and found him in deep conversation with a very... All right, so here's a quick look at a PDF. So you can load up PDFs on here. Uh, has some different cropping modes and different options for that. So load up the settings menu here. So you have these different paging options and uh, you got some different views here and you've got the margin cropping. It can be either be automatic or you can set it up yourself. You also got some like uh, color adjustment options and contrast adjustment options and settings menu here. So some different stuff available for PDFs. Um, you can fit to width. You got the uh, zoom dial here that you can sort of set up uh, the zoom level how you like it. Um, Links work, so if you hit a link, it'll take you to that page, and you've got the go back option right here uh, in the lower left. So um, you've also got reflow on here, so if you wanted to reflow your PDF, it'll like uh, give it adjustable font sizes, like more of like a regular ebook. So this can kind of vary depending on the file. If you have like a text-based file, it can work really well. If you have a lot of images and graphs and stuff like that, it might not work so well but it could come in handy for text-based PDFs. So uh, another thing with Pocketbooks is they have this app section here. So they do have some games that are included and they support Dropbox. They've also got the Pocketbook Cloud for transferring files wirelessly. There's some other stuff like Music Player, Web Browser, Calculator. So you've got some different stuff on here and you can even install other reading apps like CoReader. So in the settings menu, you do have some uh, personalized settings, which are kind of cool with Pocketbooks. So you can uh, customize the like buttons to like how they work. You can map them to do different things and you have different options like globally or EPUBs or PDFs. So you can set up your button to do different things if you hold them and um, just regular press them. And you've also got some different gestures that you can set up for like on-screen tapping. Um, and you've got some different options to set up for that as well. So some more customization options available on Pocketbooks. So here's just another quick look at a comic. So obviously if you got color content, it's gonna look pretty good on the color ink screen. Um, so Onyx has some color ink devices as well. They're quite a bit more expensive. They do have the newer Collidio 3 screens, which are a little bit nicer. So it just kind of depends on what you need. The Pocketbook's more affordable, more of an e-reader type device. One thing to keep in mind is the screens are darker than regular e-ink screens. So you gotta turn up the front light more. So here's a look at compared to the Paperwhite 5 with the front light turned off. So you do kind of have to turn up the front light more to kind of match the look of regular e-ink because um, they have that color filter layer above the screen that makes it a little bit darker. But yeah, here's the original ink pad colors I showed in the other video, just a quick look. Colors are better. The performance is quite a bit faster with the quad core CPU. It's still not blazing fast by any means, not as fast as some other devices, but definitely faster than the original ink pad color. So this has been a look at the ink pad color too. Check out the ebook reader blog for more info. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.